by the end of this video, you'll have a solid understanding of all five circle commands that are available in Fusion 360. Hey there, it's Kevin Kennedy, and welcome to the Product Design Online YouTube channel, where I demo all things Fusion 360. If you're new here, be sure to hit that red subscribe button and go ahead and comment below and let me know what you plan on using Fusion 360 for. For this demo, I'll be using some sketches that I've gone ahead and set up to reinforce how these circles work. You can download the demo file in the video description. Now the circle tool is another commonly used sketch tool in any CAD program. To make things even more efficient, Fusion 360 offers five different types of circles. Each one is created using different selections, and each one includes different types of constraints. If you go to the Circle Flyout menu located in the Sketch drop-down list, you'll notice all five Circle tools are located in that folder. Now the first option, the Center Diameter Circle, is one of the most commonly used Circle tools, which is why the Fusion engineers have given it the keyboard shortcut letter C, as in Charlie. The last thing I want to point out before I cover each circle tool is that if you find yourself using other circle tools a lot, then you can assign your own custom keyboard shortcuts to them. I'll link to the custom keyboard shortcuts video down below in the video description. Now I'll go ahead and double click on the sketch in the timeline to edit the sketch so I can draw the circles with the demo geometry. I'll select the center diameter circle in the marking menu by right clicking, selecting sketch at the bottom, and the center circle is located in the upper left hand corner. The center diameter circle requires two mouse clicks. The first mouse click sets the center point of the circle. I have this rectangle here with four equal sides. I'll set the center by clicking on the center point of the rectangle where these two construction lines cross. Then, as I drag out with my mouse, you'll notice that I can either type out a dimension followed by the Enter key, or I can click at the corner point if I want the circle to line up with the outside of the rectangle, or I can click at the midpoint of a line where the circle will snap tangent to the edge of the rectangle. So I'll just go ahead and click here to snap the circle tangent to the edge. Like any sketch tool, the circle tool will remain active until you select another command or hit the escape key on your keyboard. You'll also notice that you can switch between each type of circle by clicking on a different type in the sketch palette. I'll switch to the first one, the two point circle. The two point circle also requires two mouse clicks. I'll click on the top line to set the first point. Then you'll see as I move my mouse around, the circle is tied to that first diameter point, unlike the center circle that is tied to the center point. Now this two point circle gives you a bit more flexibility to snap into other geometry. For now, I'll simply click the top left corner of the rectangle which sets the circle in place. Now the next circle is the three point circle, which I'll select in the sketch palette. The three point circle allows you to create a circle by defining three points of the circle's circumference or the outer edge. The first two points are the diameter or width of the circle, and the third point is the height of the circle. For this circle, I'll click on this inner corner for the first point, and the opposite corner for the second point. Then, you'll see as I drag my mouse around, the circle will stay snapped into the first two points, and it will resize according to the location of the third point. I want this circle to be contained within this geometry, so I'll click the midpoint of the bottom line, which you'll notice added a tangent constraint. Now you can also access all five circles from the right click sketch menu within the circle flyout folder. The next circle on the list is the two tangent circle. This circle requires three mouse clicks. 
The first two clicks will be points or lines that you want the circle to stay tangent to. Then the third point will be the size of the circle. I'll select these inner two lines and you'll notice that the circle stays tangent to these two lines, even if the circle is larger than the lines. Now after clicking to set the size or third point, you'll notice that the tangent constraints were automatically created for the two tangent lines. The fifth and final circle is the three tangent circle. This circle works just as the two tangent circle, with the obvious exception that you'll be able to choose three tangent pieces of sketch geometry. I'll click this top inner line, the bottom inner line, and I'll click this top horizontal line. And notice that the circle is tangent to this bottom line here, even though it doesn't physically touch it. And it's also gone ahead and added all three constraints for us. In summary, even if you find yourself mainly using center circles, you'll find that all the circle types offer a different amount of control. Now, which circle you use really comes down to your specific needs. The best circle is always the circle that will save you time from having to manually add constraints. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions at all about this tutorial or Fusion 360 questions in general, then be sure to comment them below. Hit that thumbs up icon if you learned something in this video and click subscribe followed by that little bell icon to be notified of more Fusion 360 tutorials.